Well, thanks to Jeep and their quality issues, and of course, the fact that Stellantis has created some of the lowest quality vehicles for some time, and of course, their pricing has been way too high, especially given what we're starting to see with some of the latest offerings from the brand. Jeep now is in a place where they're literally collapsing, and the sad part is they're actually having to discontinue certain models just because of this lack in quality overpricing, and the market just won't have it. Customers are done with it. They're finished. It's over. Kaput. That's right. People are done with many of these Jeep models. What's going on here? Well, let's get right to it. First of all, we have to note, you know, the infamous Jeep Renegade. It's that little putt-putt little square box that was fun and fresh. Of course, it also had a 2.4 liter four-cylinder Tiger Shark engine. You can get a manual gearbox. It looked fun. It looked sprightly and sporty. But quality concerns, high CO2 emissions, oil burning with the Tiger Shark, gearbox issues when ordered up with the automatic, and just general quality control challenges, not to mention TIPM as well as a lot of other electric related issues associated with many of the Stellantis Jeep and Chrysler Dodge Ram products means that people are just getting done with it. People are just, the appetite's gone. It's like throwing up at the end of a long night of boozing. You're just done. You just, it's over. It's done. You just propel. It's over. So the Jeep Renegade is one model because people are just finished with that and it's enough. There's another model we have to talk about. Specifically are the Fiat 500X. Now we know the Fiat 500X Fiat 500 has had a reputation for marginal reliability. Now, there's a lot of fun Fiats, right? You can get the Abarth model, really, really fun to drive. It's a very spirited, you know, enthusiastic type driving experience. And a lot of people love it. Even the regular 500s, they're a lot of fun. They're, you know, they're very small in nature, sporty. And you see lots of them in Europe. But here in North America, they haven't really caught on the way, you know, Chrysler, Jeep, Stellantis had hoped. And as a result... You know, the poor quality, the poor reputation, the, the poor sales because people aren't tolerating the poor quality. As a result, you know, the dollars and cents and the basic economics of selling that type of vehicle just didn't add up for a lot of customers here in North America, Canada, US. They're just done. They drove them for several years and they're kind of done, specifically with the X model, which is a little bit bigger. It's more of an SUV version, weak transmission. You had the multi-air system. Of course, there was issues there, electronics galore. And it just didn't have the freshness that you get with the regular smaller 500 cars. And it just wasn't appealing to a lot of people. There's a lot of better options out there. And as a result, they've decided to essentially all but eliminate it. Yeah, they're bringing in an electric version of the 500 now because, hey, we've got to essentially sacrifice something. And they figure, hey, cheap simple little vehicle that we can just toss to the wolves and it's sacrificial anode if the electrification market doesn't work so be it we toss that car to the wolves if it works great we didn't cost as much the r d on the chassis straightforward simple little vehicle we can at least meet the intent as well as to emissions and ev and of course the regulators but at the end of the day the x the 500x is another one of those models because of poor quality poor sales it's hitting the road. Another one that we have to talk about. Now we all know one of the most popular, this one's a little more shocking because a Jeep, like the Wrangler is truly their, their benchmark, their staple vehicle. The vehicle that everybody knows and loves when they think of Jeep. The Grand Cherokee is another one that a lot of North American buyers have really enjoyed. Bigger, more luxurious, and clearly Jeep was developing a car that was very much appealing. Now it was a very expensive vehicle and in the last few years the Grand Cherokee has gone up quite significantly in cost. There's been a lot of technology added to it. Sure, you get the leather and the sunroof and, you know, great, fun and frivolous auto, you know, automatic transmission engagement systems, although there have been some problems there with the rollaways. Uh, there's a lot to like about the Jeep Grand Cherokee. What's not to like is the overpriced nature. They're trying to compete with a lot of the luxury segments. You sit up next, a SQ5, Audi, or even a BMW X3, or even an X5, which is more like it. Put an X5 next to a Grand Cherokee, not even in the same league. But trust me, the cost isn't that far off, especially when you get the mid-level X5 engine and you team that up against the Jeep Grand Cherokee premium drivetrains. It's a wash. So clearly, it's not in the same place. And if you talk about reliability, BMW's reliability has 
slightly risen on the last few years because of their B38 and B48, the four and six cylinder engines. But unfortunately, Jeep Stellantis Dodge brands have not really done much in terms of overall reliability with problems like the TIPM, the totally integrated power module. It's caused a lot of grief there for a lot of those vehicles, but it's not the Grand Cherokee that's going away. It's the baby version Cherokee. Everybody's aware of the original Cherokee. It was that little utility vehicle, that SUV that was very popular in the masses. Square, boxy, remember that one many moons ago? Super popular because it was cost effective, utility vehicle, hatchback, like everything about it just made sense for buyers. And then they transitioned to the things that were more unibody and they looked more simplistic and rounded off and softer. And then they had problems with transmissions and they had problems with engines and they had electric issues. And then people just started losing interest in the base Cherokee. It wasn't as honest an SUV that they once had in the Jeep brand. And now here we are, Jeep has decided is selectively to dump those three models here coming up this year. You're no longer gonna see those models largely because of the quality control issues. But again, most of those are highly overpriced. They're too expensive for what you're getting. They're just not worth it. And people now are starting to look for where the value add is. Where's the value proposition? And if you're not getting the value add on, you're probably not buying it. People are starting to think twice, three times, four times before throwing their hard earned dollars down. And now unfortunately, Jeep is making some hard decisions, having to cut their losses in a few places, and here we go. So I hope that helps you. If you're getting your heart set on one of those three, forget about it. They're no longer gonna be continued, and more importantly, they're probably not gonna even be supported in short order. Forget it, move on. I hope that helps everybody. Please, short to the sweet, but it's just another indication that I believe Jeep Stellantis products are a little out of touch with what customers are looking for. And this is a very reactionary type of move here, not so much in in front and developing a, and, and, and creating a new product as a result of poor sales, they're just dumping it like a hot turkey. So anyway, enough about that. Please do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Love for you to join in on the next one and I really do appreciate you hanging around to the end. Hope to see each and every one on the next one. See you real soon, bye-bye.